Welcome everyone to the Ask an Architect show. Here with me today, Jeremy Sharp. Jeremy, thank you for joining the show. Sure. Uh, excited to have Jeremy on. We're gonna cover a lot of different topics and kind of go through his journey a little bit in architecture and hopefully add some value uh, for you guys out there uh, in architecture school right now. So, um, Jeremy, I want to start with uh, just a quick overview of who you are and what you're doing right now. Kind of 20, 25 seconds. Give us the overview. Who is Jeremy Sharp? Uh, I'm an architect with BKV Group okay. here in Washington, D.C. Yep. Uh, I'm uh, my role is a, is a project manager, sorts of overseeing, um, you know, contracts, design, and uh, production of uh, multifamily mixed-use housing, residential projects. Um, both in this area and around the country. Cool. And I'm uh, married with two little kids and trying to balance life, work, and yeah, everything I, else in between. I want to get I want to get to that as we as we go through here and tell your story. Um, to give us a little more context, tell us about BKV Group. Um, how big is the firm, and kind of what 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 is the culture like there? Yeah, BKV is a 150-person firm okay. headquartered in uh, Minneapolis. Oh, okay. And we've got about 100 professionals in Minneapolis and then about 25 to 30 in both Chicago and D.C. Oh, okay. So D.C. is a satellite office, yes. technically. Okay. Technically. So, one, but we, we are one office in three locations. Here in D.C.? Well, a one office total, three locations. Three locations. Chicago, Minneapolis, D.C. What we strive to do is um, integrate all the disciplines um, across a number of functions. I see what you're saying. It's, and, not, uh, it's not separate. Right. We all work together gotcha. um, using technology and airplanes and phone calls and try to... Those airplanes you know. will do it. Yes. Um, so I want to kind of get into, um, you had given me a, a variety of anecdotes here about kind of different things in your career, and I want to touch on a, a variety of them because I think they each provide unique value to our audience in different ways. Um, you had mentioned that um, most of the jobs you've gotten over the course of your, your career have come through um, a connection or a network of some type, and that only mm -hmm. recently did you get your first job that was literally a cold you know, resume, interview, you got the job type of scenario. Correct. So literally, we're talking, you know, most of the scenarios result in connections. And I, I, I want to emphasize that for our audience. So how would you recommend that students go out and make connections and build their network so that when they get out and they're looking for their first job, they don't have to do the cold resume thing. They can try to leverage a network. Sure. What um, would you recommend? Well, I my first job I got as a summer intern in, in college was through uh, my mother's boss who called an architect. So family. He was in commercial real estate. Yep. They're in commercial real estate. They had an architecture firm they worked with. He made a phone sure. call and they said to me at the end of the summer, he said, honestly, we hired you because you were our clients. Yep. Told us to and Good enough. you turned out pretty well. Yep. So. Okay. So, so that's connection number one. What I else think, did you have? Yeah. Well, you know, and from there, um, you know, someone I worked with at that firm met another, uh, met the partner of a firm at a career fair actually okay and the, they were at a career fair and they're like oh i don't like anyone here and he said well why don't you talk to this guy okay so i got a job with them huh. in that okay. way so uh part of it is you know getting that foot in the door yep and then making sure you work hard to um i think internally network is is something nobody talks about a yeah. lot is great point yeah finding mentors finding people who are your advocate and really um you know, making sure you build those relationships. I think that's a really unique aspect to, to emphasize, that it's not just your network outside of the firm or through professional organizations, but also the people you're working with day to day also mm -hmm. know people, and you never know where those might lead. Right. Um, what about, what else? Any other connections that were able to kind of move you through your career? Um, that's I, kind of the main. That's really sort of the main two. jumping off point yeah. and then continuing with those. Continuing but, with that thread. But I think it's really important to get involved in organizations. I think it's important for architecture students to meet people outside of the architecture building. That's a great point um, too, yeah. yeah. You know, it's easy to get friends locked in. and network and really do that because I think later in your career you'll really need that um, multidisciplinary kind of network. You know, that's... That's fantastic as well because your clients aren't necessarily other architecture students when you yeah. get out. So making a broad range of connections in other disciplines could lead to even client work later. Absolutely. Um, 
so tell me about the cold resume process. So you're literally just sending out resumes. You happen to go get one, get an interview. Is, is your approach differently when you're coming in cold versus when you know the, the people? Um, absolutely, because I think um, when you know someone or someone knows you and someone vouches for you, they open the door for you. Sure. And then you're in. Yep. And you just need to, you know, do a good interview, talk to someone, and, you know, make sure you present yourself well. And usually that personal endorsement can carry a can lot of weight. Can give you a lot of weight, sure. But when you are doing a cold resume, you really, I think, really have to put a cover letter together that is a sales pitch. Yeah, I mean, and enthusiastic. You got to stand and then, out, right? Yeah, something to make you stand out. And, you know, something I'm not personally good at, I always say, is like putting the mustard on it. You know, like sure. really like giving that strong sales pitch. So, you know, even if it seems a little cheesy, like sticking out and really, you know, expressing enthusiasm for the company and what they do is I think a way to stick out, rather than just look like you've sent out your form cover letter to everyone. Yeah, you know, we've heard that in a variety of fashions before on this show, that a lot of times it's the soft subjects, it's um, the people skills, or it's the passion, enthusiasm, or energy even, that can get a job versus the skill set particularly, or a specific mm -hmm. niche or specialty or anything like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. So. Um, you also mentioned one of the anecdotes you, you kind of gave me is that you know there have been pros and cons to changing jobs over the course of your career, yeah. and people have all different theories on this as to whether it's it's more beneficial to, to kind of you know move along your career and try a bunch of different things and experiment, or whether it's best to stay put at one place and really develop your experience you know in, in that one location. Yeah. Um, what's your take on both? What what are the pros? What are the risks um, of of hopping around? Well, the, you know, I think it, the, your path depends on your individual preferences and if you sure. land at a place that you really like and can move forward. I think um, the reasons to move out are because you don't feel like you're growing or you're just not exactly doing what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the time to move, you know, or when you want to get a new challenge mm -hmm. or try something new. Sure. Um, so it's, the, the, it's personal growth. Yeah, I think it's personal growth and um, a diversity of kind of work you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is a lot of times when you stay in a job for a long time, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty well talked about that you can get a pay bump sometimes by sure. leaving. Sure. And it's an easier yeah. way to grow your salary. But sure. it's harder because you aren't established there. And, you know, quite frankly, in architecture, a lot of the path is you know, work there for many years, become a trusted associate and a partner, mm -hmm. and earn your way up that. So you've got to earn some um, credibility and cachet with the people you're working with. And sure, you lose some of that when you leave. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's a great point too. Not a lot of people realize that they see, you know, either the bump in pay or the new dip, different type of work or just new scenery. And they yeah. think that that is, you know, uh, greener grass, so to speak, uh, when a lot of times that's not necessarily the case. But I think that um, credibility or moving around and trying experiences is very easy when you're young and early in your career. So if, yeah. if that's what you want to do, then go right ahead. Knowing that as you kind of move along through your career, it'd probably be more beneficial to start to be more consistent. Yeah, or find a landing, find a landing spot. <laughs> um, so uh, we're kind of leading into the topic of patience here, and I want to I want to go into that. Um, you mentioned a particular anecdote about a parking garage and how long it took to work on this parking garage. Now, parking garages aren't they're not the se the sexiest, edgiest, chicest things to work right. on, right? And most people would see that experience as a reason to get out in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, but you kind of have an experience with a parking garage where it's actually kind of informed a lot of stuff that you're doing in your career, or at least helped launch you you know, to where you are now. So well, tell me about that story. Well, what I, I, what I was trying to convey to you was that my first six months out of college, more or less, mm -hmm. um, you know, I took a job at a prestigious firm that was doing great sure. projects, and I got put on designing a parking garage. Yep. That um, was not that prestigious, but it did offer me some design opportunities, and it offered me a chance to learn how a parking garage works. Yeah, so, which is a complicated actual scenario when you think about specialty, it physically. It's a specialty, but every project I work on now has yep. a parking garage. Sure, yeah. So 
when you learn that skill yep. and go through it and get a chance to do the documents, you know, you, that's something you can build on. So I think early in your career, especially, don't turn down anything that's a learning opportunity mm -hmm. because you can use it or decide you don't like to do it, but yeah. it's always a learning opportunity. Yeah, and just because you do one parking garage doesn't mean you have to be a parking garage specialist for the rest Correct. of your career. But I, I think noting that it is an integral part of a lot of buildings, being able to know and be comfortable with that subject is important, and mm -hmm. so that that doesn't scare you away later on when you're right. pursuing a job. Um, so talking further about kind of design aesthetics and you know sometimes just the functionality of design, um, you've worked on some projects, particularly one on the mall, that you had to integrate into kind of a historic building, right. um, and it wasn't necessarily the high design um, in any way, but that was the point of it. The point was to actually mix with right. the context. So tell me about that project on the mall and kind of what the goal was and kind of what your reflections are yeah. on that Well, project. early in my career, I worked on the American Pharmacists Association headquarters, which they had a very small one-story building on the mall, and it okay. was sort of set up on a hill, and we had to add um, what they were going to do was they owned the lot behind the building. We're going to add an office building okay. of which their organization needed to expand and then they would lease out the rest of the building gotcha. to, as revenue for the organization. So as the zoning uh, administrator pointed out in our hearing, he said, wait, you're building a building 20 times the size of this historic building yeah, behind it? Sure. And yeah, we were. So yeah. it was... Um, you know, what we had was we had a site going uphill and we stepped the building a little bit as it went uphill. Okay. There were some large trees that we sort of, you know, put the you building behind, used, strategically yeah. used. And we um, arranged it in a way so that <clears throat> it was symmetrical about the existing building. And as a background building, it sort of just kind of faded back. It wasn't domineering. Yeah. So... You know, next door Moshi Softy designed a building, and there were other famous buildings nearby, and nobody has ever mentioned this building, and which is sort of the point and that's of the, the point, design, right? Right. Yep. Like sometimes you're not the star, and and the fact that it's so well done and blends in is is a success story. Is a success. Yeah, I, I think that's great to emphasize as well that you know different clients have different goals and different contexts and, mm -hmm. and scenarios have different um, levels of success as to what defines that success. Um, and knowing what those you know key performance indicators are ahead of time can help you satisfy both the client, you know, provide the right architecture, and hopefully you know um, do your firm right. Yeah. Um, one other thing I want to kind of go into with you, Jeremy, is um, a little bit of a, 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 a side project or, or endeavor you've been working on, and that is that um, you went in and you got a master's in real estate development, correct? Yes, correct. So I'm sure there's a lot of folks in our audience that are considering real estate development as a potential career or as a potential master's on top of their architecture mm -hmm. degrees. Um, why did you pursue that? Um, what was your experience like, and then how do you think you're going to use it going forward? Um, well, I pursued it really, um, there were several ideas. One was, do I change my career path? Okay. That's a consideration, but I haven't, um, I'm not interested in changing right just yet. And, but what it really is, to me, is it's a way to learn what our client's business is hmm. and understand how they see things and what they need. And um, also understand, to me, it's the the how or the why of architecture. You know, as an architect, you are hired to design a building, but why are you designing this building? What are the goals? You know, sure. Rather than just being, um, you know, this is sort of a lesson I took from the recession was, rather than waiting for your career to find you, you know, you've got to find you know, take some ownership of what the bigger picture in the world around yep. building a building You've got to make your career. The economy and the, yep. you know, the finances and all those things that surround construction and design that, you know, architects aren't really taught very much about. So yep. to me, that was just a really important lesson. And also, um, you know, as an architect, you don't get a great business background knowledge sure and um, okay. just having some basic business knowledge was a really you know good experience so do you feel like that's really informing your practice right now and what you do and 
um, I mean, I, I yeah. love how you're framing it within the context of the, the client's mindset. I think that that seems to add a lot of value. Yeah. Is that how you, you perceive it now, looking back? I do perceive it that way. I think the clients, um, you know, they, they have a process they go through. Mm -hmm. And for us to understand that process and be with them and know the answers to the questions they need yep. at the time they need them is is what I think helps serve the client best. You know, I'm sure. doing a lot of developer-driven work right now, and you know, they need information and yep. certain things, and their whole process is a little bit different than the way maybe architects were trained to think about it. Yeah, and I would imagine you're much more relatable to a client if you have that background, you know what they're going through, and you can kind of speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this is, this is great, Jeremy. I, I appreciate you kind of sharing you know, several little tidbits of, of your story. Um, as we kind of wrap up here, I want to ask you a couple more personal things and, and give some advice to our audience. Um, hmm. uh, individually, you as a person, how are you keeping yourself, um, how are you progressing or educating yourself or keeping yourself entertained? What's exciting you, whether it's book, podcast, movie, show, something else in life right now, what's out there that is keeping you focused, driven, and maybe helping you grow on a week-to-week on a -week basis a little bit? <laughs> Is there anything out there pop culture wise, uh, life experience wise? I haven't paid attention to any pop culture. In so you have long. two kids, I've right? Got, one and I've three. I've got two kids, one and three. So, how have they helped your practice? Um, you know, managing difficult personalities yeah. is something people talk about, about a lot. Yep. Um, and I think, um, you know, to be honest, I was listening to um, Bloomberg Radio on my drive in this morning. And okay. It was Michael Bloomberg talking about how. People need recognition. People need, you know, to feel a part of a group. I mean, little kids are the same way, but management sure. is the same thing. People want recognition. They want to participate. They want to feel like people care about them. And by giving that, you can get back what yep. you're looking for, too. So it's basic human nature. Human um, nature. And, you know, I think that's always an interesting thing for me to learn, you know, the social aspects of yeah. how you integrate with people and what people need. Yeah, so how how well are you managing your one and three year old? Um, do you feel like, you mentioned <laughs> dealing with difficult personalities, are they on the more difficult side? No, they're actually very easy going. Okay, and good. So it's, you know, day to day. But what um, I've been really interested in is um, some podcasts and books about um, economic issues, uh, you know, sort of related to this recent business degree. Yeah, and, that makes uh, sense. Talking about um, the intersection of business and politics and mm -hmm. urban planning and walkability. And, and I'm just really interested in, you know, talking about how um, urbanizing the suburbs is the next project in Very America, cool. I think, over the next few decades of talking about, you know, how are we going to make transit parking lots into homes and Yep. So the places. new urban agenda, kind of the how, what's the next iteration for cities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, very cool. Um, so as we kind of go to close here, um, again, audience of architecture students, um, you've been out in the profession for a while now, but looking back, what advice would you give to somebody who's maybe on the cusp of graduation, um, looking at you know their potentially their first job, potentially making a move to a new city? Um, and starting to engage with a, you know, an entirely new group of personalities at a professional level. Mm -hmm. um, obviously a new peer base from you know, emerging professionals to principals. Like, what advice would you give to those folks who are on the doorstep of graduation? Um, I, you know, just um, have courage a little bit because I think um, you'll, find, you know, you'll, fi you'll find a group that you like working with and you'll be able to fit in with them and you know, any city you move to, you'll be able to connect with people and, um, you know, sort of find your tribe, if you will. Yeah. And don't feel, um, you know, discouraged or s too scared about it because I think, you know, it, it can turn out. Yeah. Well I mean, don't you. fear what could go wrong. Be excited about what could go right. Yes. Right? All right, Jeremy. Well, thanks so much for joining thank us on you. the show this week. Um, uh, it's great to have Jeremy on, and we thank you for joining us on the Ask an Architect show. We'll see you next time.